In this video, you will learn what is the MMC, how to use an MMC, and how to build your own MMC. So the first thing, the first thing I'd like to show you is an example of an MMC. And one of the most widely used MMCs in Windows 2003 server is the Computer Management MMC. And we can get to that by going to the My Computer icon, giving a right click, and going to Manage. When we do that, it brings up the Computer Management MMC, Microsoft Management Console. And you will see that this has most of your uh, predefined snap-ins already set. And as you add more roles to your server, it will actually add the uh, snap-ins automatically to this tool so that you have uh, almost everything right here at your fingertips in one easy-to-use MMC. The first thing you'll notice about the MMC is it's made up of two panes. There's the left-hand pane over here and the right-hand pane over here. And just like with Windows Explorer, which most people are familiar with, you select stuff over here in the left-hand side, and you make changes to stuff over here on the right-hand side. Like, uh, just say I want to go to my local users and groups. I can select them over here, and just say I want to select my users tab. And when I do that, over here in the right-hand pane, it brings up the users that I have on the server currently. Now this particular MMC is built and handled by Windows completely. You cannot add any more snap-ins over here yourself manually because it's locked. And I will show you some more about that later. But uh, as you add server roles to your server, you will notice that the list down here will actually grow. And you will be able to administer almost everything on your server from this one handy interface. Which is really great, but sometimes it's not exactly what you need. Just say you have a particular administrator and his only job is just adding users and groups. Well, there's no reason to give him this entire Microsoft Management Console and have the power of doing all these administrative tools when all he really needs is this one little snap-in right there. You will also see that Microsoft has automatically given each one of these snap-ins just about its own MMC. And you can bring them up individually if you want by just typing their name in their run command up here, down at start, or run, and we'll do the user management group, which I like because it's called loser manager, L-U-S-R-M-G-R dot M-S-C. The M-S-C is the extension for Microsoft Management Consoles. And if I go ahead and click OK there, uh, it brings up just the local and user group administrative tool. What you'll notice is just a simple MMC with just the local user and group management tool built into it. And just like the Microsoft Computer Management Console itself, this one is also locked. So this is the only thing I can do with this tool. I can look at my users and I can look at my groups, nothing else. What if the same administrator also looks at the event viewer? Well, in that case, we'd have to build our own MMC just for that particular administrator that could contain two snap-ins, like the local user and groups management snap-in, and then just say the event viewer snap-in. And in order to do that, let's just go ahead and close these out so we don't have a whole mess up here. So what we're going to do is we go down to our start menu here, we go to our handy run command, and then here we just type in MMC. Uh, you can add the extension if you'd like, but you don't really need to. It's actually an executable. And when you do that and click OK, it actually brings up a blank MMC. And it's by default, it's called a console one. And here's your console root. And from the console root is where we can add snap-ins to make this a useful tool. Unlike the previous two MMCs that I demonstrated, this one is not locked. And I can change this any way I want. I can actually maximize that. And I go up to the File menu here, and you'll see that there's an Add and Remove Snap-in ability, which actually I didn't show you, but it was not in the other menu system. And from here, I can actually click Add and Remove Snap-ins, and it brings up the Add and Remove Snap-in dialog box. From here, you'll see that so far my console root is completely empty. There's nothing in, there's no snap-ins here at all. Well, all I have to do is say Add a Snap-in, and it will bring up all the snap-ins that are currently on my system. And uh, just say we go down to our local user and group snap-in. All we have to do is click it here, and click Add, and it will ask me. What do I want to do? Do I want to administer the local computer here or another computer? So I could actually click another computer and browse on my network and actually manage another computer remotely from this snap-in. But we're going to go ahead and do the local machine. We'll click Finish. And then we'll do the other one I had mentioned, the Event Viewer. So if we go up here and click the Event Viewer, and then we can add that one too. And again, it gives me the option, do I want to administer the local computer with this snap-in or do I want to do another computer? And again, we're going to do the local computer. And when I click Finish and Close there, you will see that uh, standalone snap-ins here, there are two of them listed. And when I click OK here now, it will add them right there to my console root. Now I have the ability from this one console now to do the two necessary administrative tools that I want specifically. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this particular console for other user on the server. His name is Todd, and uh, he's an administrator, but he's only got uh, certain administrative rights. And let's say his duties as an administrator is just to manage local user and group accounts, and he also has to keep an eye on the events. 
I want Todd to make sure uh, if there's any errors popping up that he's aware of them immediately so we can get them fixed. And not only here on the server, but we're going to say that Todd's other responsibility is also to make sure that there's no problems with the client that's also on his network. So we're going to go ahead and add another snap in and remove snap ins. And we're going to add another instance of the event viewer snap in uh, right there. And this time though, instead of doing the local machine, we're going to go ahead and do the test client. And Todd also needs to pay attention to to make sure there's no errors at all. And so we'll go close, and you'll now notice that there's another snap in. It's another event viewer, but this one says saying local, it says test client. And we click OK, you will see we have another instance of it. Looks just like the first one, except for you can see the difference, it says test client. And we open this one now, Todd can look at, say, the application events on the other client. And you notice there's some problems here, so Todd is going to have to figure that out and uh, start working, so we better get him this console. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to save this console for our user Todd to be able to get to. So what we're going to do first is we're going to close up all these little containers. And the reason we're going to do that and select the console root is because if we actually leave a container open and highlight it like that, so if we went down here like this, if we save the console that way, this is the way the console would come up every time. So we're going to go ahead and save it uh, as just a closed up root. And so we're going to go File, Save As, and we're going to save it to the desktop just to make it easy for now. And we'll call it Todd's tool and click save. And you'll see the icon pop up here. Now the nice thing is it's saved this way so we can close the console and just reopen it at any time we need to. The best part is not only can we double click on it but so can Todd. And we can actually take this particular file now and we can put it either on his computer if he's running XP or Windows 2003 or on a network share where Todd can get to it and uh, Todd can just double click on it and get to his tools that he needs. One last thing that I want to do to this particular tool before I give it to Todd, though, is I want to put it in what's called user mode. And by doing so, it will lock the console so Todd cannot add snap-ins on his own or really mess with the configuration of this console himself. So what I'll do is I'll go to the File menu, and I go to Options. And right here, you'll notice that this particular console is in Author mode. Um, all I have to do is change it to one of the three user modes, uh, which gives him varying rights of uh, access, really. And we're just going to lock it right down, and we're not going to allow him to save changes to the console right now. And we click Apply and OK. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot has changed uh, from our original console. If we go to the File menu, we can still add and remove snap-ins. Well, that's because we actually haven't closed it yet. As soon as we close this and say, yes, yeah, save the tool and reopen it, you'll notice now all those options are gone. I really can't do much except for my job. This console is completely locked down now. Todd can open it, Todd can look at the events, he can look at the users, he can make changes to the users himself even if he wants to, uh, whatever he needs to do, but he can't actually change the tool. So now what if the need arises for you as the overall administrator to change this tool again? Well you see is, uh, since the tool is open and I do have the administrative rights, I no longer have the ability to change this back into author mode. Am I stuck? No. Luckily I'm not. What I can do is I can actually bring this tool up manually in author mode as long as I do have administrative rights. And the way I do that is I'll close this up and I have to do it through a command line. So I can do that through the run command and I can just drag the Todd's tool here into my open box and then if I go to the end here and all I have to do is put the slash a option uh, at the end and that will actually bring the tool up in author mode. And you'll see now I have the ability to go back in and I had to remove snap-ins or uh, rechange the options if I wanted to go away from the user mode. So that's how I would do that. So now you have learned a little bit about the MMC, the Microsoft Management Console. You have uh, learned how to use an MMC and you have learned how to build your own MMC. So I hope this video has been informative for you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Windows 2003 Server Series, the MMC. Microsoft Management Console. In this video, you will learn what is the MMC, how to use an MMC, and how to build your own MMC. So the first thing I'd like to show you is an example of an MMC. And one of the most widely used MMCs in Windows 2003 server is the Computer Management MMC. And we can get to that by going to the My Computer icon, giving it a right click, and going to Manage.